six engines revving as high as 15,000 RPM. Very warm day here in Montreal. The cars to the left of your screen are on the racing line. They'll get better traction off the start. The guys on the right are going to have to be very careful. They're on the dirty line. Turn it up and listen to one of the most amazing sounds anywhere. Championship. I think we got it. The drivers seem to think so. They are away. Samantha gets around his teammate Ricardo Patrese right at the start. Oh, one of the Ferraris cross pushed off there by Ayrton Senna. A lot of speculation this weekend about how the two Williams teammates would handle that start, and apparently Nigel Mansell just went for it. It is Mansell, Patrese, Senna, Cross, and the rest of the field as you see. streaming out somebody lighting up the tires there and braking for the chicane on the back side of this racetrack a very narrow island the Ile de Notre Dame the racetrack about 150 yards across from straightaway to straightaway if you could throw a rock across it under the bridge remember the crash between Sandro Donini's parked car and John Alessi and the Tyrrell a year ago in the wet as I said it's also very unforgiving as you can see there's very little runoff area to the sides here if you should put a wheel into that grass which is still wet from the rain the other day He'll be straight to the wall. Down to that turn 10. This is where we're going to see some passing as the afternoon progresses. Senna, Prost, Berger. Looks like a Lacey coming there. up the inside along the Benetton. Both Benetton's are there. But come off it. Just through this fast set of sweepers here. They go fast and fast. And find this left hand downhill. Tremendous speed through there. And as they exit and come up to the chicane here, they get up to 189 in practice. And with that tailwind you were talking about earlier on, probably going over 190 today. Senna, followed by the red Ferraris of Prost and Lacey, then Gerhard Berger in the red and white McLaren, then in Nelson Piquet in one of the Benetton cars. There is Mansell with a good early lead, about four car lengths. Patrese very much a question in this race. He was having his neck worked on while the cars were sitting on the grid by a masseuse. One of the Ferraris looked like a Lacey going under Prost there. This newly resurfaced track has been something of a conundrum for these teams as they try to dial in these cars. Let's get down to the minority pits and John Bisignano. It's a very quick spit stop for Piro. He's come in. They've changed all four tires. I can't see a problem with the car. Walk off the front brakes. But why in the world he came in? They got tires on the first lap. We'll never know. They're, they're checking for flats, but right now everything looks absolutely with pressure. Well, it must have been a leaking tire. No other reason that they would bring in. That was the Dallara, not the Minardi pits, of course. Here is the intra-team battle on Ferrari. Prost and Alessi. I think that Prost is holding Alessi up. I mean, a lot of people won't want to hear that, but I think at the moment it's one of those situations. If Alessi gets around him, I think he'll uh, uh, put some pressure on Senna. Now, this is a race where we expect to see tremendous pressure on gearboxes. There's a lot of shifting with tight corners like this hairpin. Very hard on brakes, very hard on fuel consumption, particularly for the V12-powered cars, and very hard on tires as well. This is a new racing surface, and there was no opportunity to test on it prior to this race. Alisi desperately trying to get around uh, his teammate, Alan Prost. They actually, most of these cars, are changing gear about 30 times a lap, depending on the engine configuration. Nelson Piquet and the Benetton Ooh. get a little bit sideways under pressure. Uh, excuse me, that's Moreno, but being overtaken by Piquet. And he gets around. Somebody got very sideways, got a wheel on the grass there, coming onto the chicane on the pit straight, one of those green cars. I'm not sure it was a Jordan or, or a uh, Leighton House, actually. Frost still holding on for Lacey. There is Ayrton Senna, presently running in third position, over a second and a half down to second place, Ricardo Patrese. The Ferraris running in lockstep. You're watching live the battle in round five of the Formula One World Championship. It is Nigel Mansell leading Ricardo Patrese, Ayrton Senna, Alain Prost, and Jean Alesi. We'll be right back. Can we get any um, ambient sound in the headsets? a little bit. It's kind of like speaking in a library. Susan? That's Lisa. What's her name? Lisa Martin. In the start. Okay. Bobby is going to pick us this morning, too. Second. There we go. 
can see that bloke do that half spin. That's it, boys. una personalità delle prestazioni e purtroppo dentro queste, questa squadra c'è anche Michele Ardoretto che è il più penalizzato vedete Manse già da solo dietro a lui Patrese che si ritrova Senna con Prost che è spinto dall'Esi è costretto a fare una gara d'attacco questa è la mia sensazione non credo che Prost in questi primi giri volesse tirare come sta facendo ma Lesi dietro di lui ha cominciato a spingerlo nei tubi di scarico e da questo punto Prost si trova costretto a tirare su Sena la Ferrari questa mattina e ve l'avevo detto ferma intanto guardate una cos'è una La Russe eh? la Larus di Russe proprio Suzuki abbandonata la macchina poche avete nessun problema il pilota è scappato via run away with this so far well that's exactly right no sooner have I said that I think that he's in retirement mode and of course he's, he's and one well, of the got plenty of drama here that looks like it could be a uh, one of the LaRousse cars yeah looks fairly terminal I don't think that little fire extinguisher is going to do the job somehow no it's but the old Nige no sooner have I said that I think he could be in retirement mode that he's uh, he's gone off into the distance at 100 mile an hour look at him he's got an enormous lead not that often you see a driver get out and uh, use the extinguisher as well with the fire marshals they're trying to put the fire out there's the mclaren pit well not not not, not that often we see a mclaren in the pits this early in the race either gerhard Berger. so plenty of drama in the very early stages of the race so far no doubt about that okay let's go back now to david hobbs and bob Varsha. into that car everyone is all over the engine they're changing the electrics I'll recall a year ago when Gerhard Berger jumped the start, was penalized a minute, and then was far and away the fastest man on the racetrack. Completed the race in the shortest elapsed time, but only finished fourth on the track as Ayrton Senna came through to win en route to the World Championship. Tough break for Gerhard Berger. So many rumors surrounding Gerhard Berger at the moment. He is, uh, as he has made point, uh, pointed out this week, he has got a contract for 1992 with the rumors are strong and heavy here that Michael Andretti of course will replace Berger at McLaren. There's the interval from Nigel Mansell in first place back to Ricardo Patrese then Ayrton Senna followed closely I believe that's still on Frost right up there in the red Ferrari followed by teammate Jean Alesi yes it's Frost and Alesi then Nelson Piquet Roberto Moreno the two Benettons nose to tail Stefano Modena the Tyrrell Andre de Cesaris and Bertrand Gascon nose to tail for the Georgia team that Ivan Capelli Terry Bootson JJ Leto Gianni Morbidelli Satoru Nakajima and Eric Bernard Senna's gone to great trouble to point out this weekend that all those poles and wins he's had this year have not been easy and that they have had to struggle and some of the other teams have been their own worst enemies and he, as I say, he's gone to a lot of trouble to point out that it's not just all that easy for him. You can never tell him how carefully he's driving to make those tyres last. Tyres are just a little bit of a question mark at this rate. But it certainly looks as if he's about to be overwhelmed by Alan Fox. riding with right now. Yeah, the yellow flag is for the, uh, the fire we saw in the Bruce, Suzuki's LaRouche. No sign of smoke. It would appear to be out, but the car wasn't all that far off the racetrack. This is that far section. Round this right-hander, over this little crest, down to this left-hander. The car's bottom out here, boom, boom, under that bridge. And at that point here, they're doing like 190 miles an hour into the, <coughs> onto the brakes here at the chicane where we saw John earlier. And you're seeing the road about as well as the driver sees the road. The car is still very bumpy in spots, despite the resurfacing that we've talked about. Across the start-finish line goes a long cross in the Ferrari. Difficult up here in Canada, of course, with the tremendously cold winter they have to get road surfaces. He's very quick to that first complex. That's where he was right behind him last time around. From here on out, at the next little complex, he catches up a lot more. But towards that all-important turn 10, and how can it fire into the circuit? From then on, Senna seems to have got uh, a bit of thing. But right here, he's under tough pressure from Alan Cross. Watching two men, perhaps the two canniest drivers in Formula One today, both are likely to be trying to save their cars as they run as they do now on full tanks. 
But right now, Senna seems to be almost holding up a little cross. Now he pulls away a little bit. Cross will close up under braking in the Ferrari. And John Alesi right there in the second red car. It looks a long way on the onboard camera, but as you can see outside, it's not very far. In fact, not so far in front of him. 1.4 seconds in front is Ricardo Petresi. Unfortunately, getting his first feel of that race car today. Very, very disappointing that he didn't run in the morning warm-up. We're working lap six of a scheduled 69 with the green flag conditions. Cross once again closes up on Senna. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the racetrack right here. No passing opportunities. Now you're on board with Senna. Let's see if it's any more bouncy than the Ferrari. It certainly looks as if it is, doesn't it? There's no doubt about it that the last two years, the Ferraris have been absolutely excellent on high-speed, bumpy types of tracks, and the McLarens haven't been so good. This year, the McLarens seem to have got a grip of their problem and have come back into their own, obviously, with four wins out of four starts. But nevertheless, the Ferrari are making a comeback, whether it's just coincidental with their new trio at the top of the tree there, or whether it is really because they've got a grip on things we don't know. Time will tell us as the season progresses. Hard to believe that the committee can run a race team as well as a proper manager. This is about the first time this year we've seen the two reigning superstars of Formula One, Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost, able to race one another. It has been all Senna thus far this year. He usually just checks out and disappears. But right now, it looks like he's having to drive as hard as he can just to hold off the fourth place Ferrari of Alain Prost. This is the third on the racetrack. Up front, it's Nigel Mansell by nearly four seconds now over teammate Ricardo Petrese. This battle going on about two seconds behind Petrese. Yeah, Nigel's got a handy five-second lead over this group now, a six-second lead over this group. So he is driving extremely well. We are nose to tail. A pass attempt might not be too far away as the Ferrari closes in on the McLaren. Fast part of the racetrack, up through the gearboxes. Nothing but all horsepower and courage at this part of the racetrack. There you got to look at Ricardo Patrese. Cross takes a look up the straightaway, but it won't be this time. When you see them swerving there, it wasn't really to break the draft. They're swerving around that bump that John was talking about earlier on. There is one bad bump on that track. Fast lap of the race turned in thus far as Nigel Mansell completes lap, completes lap eight. That was Patrese going out of your picture. The Renault factory that supplies engines to the Williams team running one and two right now have made it clear. They expect three or four victories this year, and they expect a world championship this year's or next. There you see the work continue on Gerhard Berger's car. He'll be back on the racetrack in a moment. Superiore sulle ruote posteriori, la Ferrari forse ha del patinamento e questo penalizza la possibilità di restare in scia. Ci sono quindi due diverse prestazioni del motore Ferrari e del motore Honda e lo possiamo vedere molto bene, la distanza tra le due macchine impedisce un tentativo di frenata. E vedete che nel misto, dove Sena in un certo senso rallenta Prost, Alessi si fa sotto e riesce anche in questo momento eh, eh, Berger, ma ha perso due o tre giri, quindi poco da fare per il pilota austriaco. Ma classifica mentre stiamo andando alla conclusione dell'ottavo del nono giro. Mans il primo con 4 secondi e 3 di vantaggio su Patrese, terzo Senna, quarto Prost che formano un gruppetto a 2 secondi e 2 da Patrese, quinto Alesi, sesti e settimi sono Piquet Moreno con le Benetton, ottavo De Cesaris, nono Modena, decimo Gascio, undicesimo Capelli, dodicesimo Thierry Buzza, in quattordicesimo è Gianni Morbidelli. sulle immagini di Senna direi che la battaglia a questo punto è tra la McLaren e la Ferrari i due partiti in seconda fila hanno rispettato le loro posizioni terzo quella delle due giornate di prove terzo Senna, quarto eh, Prost e forse Prost spingendo Senna spera anche che ci possa essere un errore a questo punto del pilota brasiliano vedete resta there we are. Welcome back after nine laps. It's Nigel Mansell from Patrese, Senna Prost, Lacey and PK. Alan, we, we mentioned the surface uh, has, is a new one, uh, and this is the first time a Grand Prix car has been on the new surface, but it looks extremely bumpy still, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, well, it is. They, they had a sports car race there last year, and it was a complete debacle. And uh, they decided to resurface it, but it's still very, very bumpy. I also noticed <coughs> they've tightened up the chicane, or in fact put a chicane before the pit straight, where we're seeing right now. So they have actually altered the circuit as well as resurfacing it. They've added another chicane. OK, great pitches tonight out of ESPN. Let's go back to Bob Varsha and David Hobbs.
Let's get down to the pits and John. Gerhard Berger is not enjoying the Canadian Grand Prix. He was in for at least three or four laps. They changed the black box on the right-hand side of the car, and they went to the two front spark plugs on the left bank of that 12-cylinder engine. They cannot figure out what is wrong when he went down the pit row. He was still misfiring heavily, and they closed the garage door on us, folks. We oh. are back in secrecy in the McLaren pit. Excuse me, John. Right at the head of the start-finish straightaway, I believe, we have Roberto Moreno, who has looped the Benetton. <laughs> but didn't stall it. And he's getting on. It doesn't look badly damaged. He's only just on the grass. If it didn't hit that gravel, it'd probably be all right. Meanwhile, Senna has pulled out a lot. Is that Prost or no? That's Elise. He must have uh, Prost must have around <coughs> Senna. I don't see Prost right. now. Prost is in the background behind. It would appear uh, Nelson Piquet in the Benetton. Well, he's either got away and pulled a long way away, or he's got left behind. Let's recap. This is Senna in third place. And that Elise. is John Alacy, that is Nelson Piquet, and here comes Alain Prost, obviously with a problem in the... Oh, uh, the left front tire, left front tire. That's Alacy's car. And there is one of the Tyrrells off in the Thule's. That is Satoru Nakajima, I believe. Yes, it is. Nakajima's had a rough weekend. He put one into the... Uh, oh, here we see a replay. Up on the curb. Oh, just nails the wall. Oh. Nakajima put one in the sand this morning and, and badly damaged his race car. This is the spare car anyway. So Nakajima will be getting a terribly uh, abusive run from the old Ken Tyrrell. Now look at the tires. See those dark streaks on the tires of Jean Alesi's Ferrari. Looks like blistering of that left front to me, but of course, it's difficult for us to tell from here. They would know certainly better than we would. Goodyear and Pirelli, the two reigning Formula One tire companies, have brought lots of tires here, and very soft tires. Because this is a new surface, it was expected to be fairly slippery. Oh, smoke there compound. for somebody. Oh, that's... Uh, I guess that's still from Nakajima, is it? Or somebody's barbecue on the other side of that wall. John Alesi will celebrate his 26th birthday in nine days. Ayrton Senna in third spot has slipped a cool four seconds behind the trade he now. John Alesi in the Ferrari under some pretty severe pressure from Nelson Piquet. Up against the Wiley Fox there, Nelson Piquet, one of the oldest drivers in Formula One racing and of course a three-time world champion, so he knows how to race Grand Prix cars. Nelson Piquet will run his 200th Formula One race this year. There is Satoru Nakajima, who has made it back to the pits in the Tyrrell. Kind of look too bad, did No, I thought for sure he had damaged those wheels when they went hard into the concrete wall, but as I look at the suspension, when they're changing that wheel, you know? This is on lap 11 of 69 scheduled. You're watching live the Formula One Grand Prix of Canada. This is the man who is Mr. Formula One in Japan, despite the fact that Aguri Suzuki his car exploded in flames, has actually scored points, which Satoru Nakajima has not. There is Jean Alesi once again as we monitor the tire situation. He's being reeled in by the Pirelli shod car of Nelson Piquet. And here's Moreno on pit lane after that spin that looked to take him through the gravel traps. Looks like something's going on with the car, the way that right front's locking up. Maybe the left rear's gone flat. Let's learn more with John Bisignano. Roberto Moreno has come into the pits. He has shut off the engine, but I think it was a mistake. They were changing all four tires very quickly. No, now they're looking at the back of the car. It has been a mistake that he has shut off the engine. They've got the starter up, but Roberto Moreno definitely has an extended pit stop. They cannot refire the engine. They're pushing him back. It's very frustrated for the little Brazilian. Tough weekend for Roberto. Had such a great race in Monaco three weeks ago. They're powered by that factory Ford V8, as you see John Alesi, pressed now by Nelson Piquet. This weekend, Ford announced that they have a V12 engine on the blocks. They expect to test it before the year is out, and it'll be racing next year exclusively with the Benetton team. Which will be good news for Benetton and good news for Benetton supporters, and, of course, good news for Pirelli, because the Benetton team is their assigned number one team. And they want a V12 in the worst possible way. There you see them swirling around the bump on the straight. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how that Cosworth Ford V12 goes. There is the third man to lead a Formula One race this year in five outings. Nigel Mansell, the Lion of Great Britain. Soon to be the Lion of Clearwater, Florida, where he's bought himself a home so he can play golf in the wintertime. Can't do that on the Isle of Man, I would bet. He maintains, too, that by the scheduling the way it is, it'll give him ten weeks more with his family by living in the, in the state than he does in the Isle of Man. 
Mansell leads Ricardo Patrese, his Williams teammate, by five seconds flat. Ayrton Senna another 5.3 seconds back. Three seconds behind Senna as Alesi followed a couple of car lengths by Nelson Piquet. And Alain Prost is now 3.6 seconds behind Piquet in the sixth and final points paying position. You're on board with Ayrton Senna and we'll be back for more live coverage of the Grand Prix of Canada. secondo quindi contatto diretto tra i due piloti però interessante anche il fatto che Modena si trova in eh, settima posizione cioè lo scontro gomme è molto interessante e D'Alesi tra l'altro comincia ad andare via lo vedete su eh, Piquet quasi Piquet in brasiliano abbia dei problemi adesso si tratta di vedere se il pilota francese lo vedremo nel prossimo passaggio con i tempi che si è messo a tirare di più sacrificando le gomme perché mi sembra che sia rimasto però invariato il distacco di eh, Alesi eh, rispetto a Senna, a dimostrazione che è Piquet che sta perdendo qualcosa, forse Piquet si è gasato di vedere la Ferrari così vicina, ha cominciato a tirare, ma vediamo la classifica generale tenendo conto anche che ci sono ancora parecchie letture in gara, quindi seguiamo anche gli italiani a questo punto. Allora Mansell è in testa, proprio in questo giro ha compiuto la sua migliore prestazione con 1.24.65 davanti a Patrese staccato di 5 secondi e mezzo, terzo posto per Senna, quarto per Alesi che ha incrementato il suo ritmo 1.25.1 per il pilota francese, Se, eh, quinto posto per Piquet, sesto per Prost, settimo Modena, ottavo è De Cesaris, nono è Capelli, decimo è Buzzel, undicesimo è Gianni Morbidelli, dodicesimo è Leto, tredicesimo è Cascio, quattordicesimo è Bernard. Questo è Ivan Capelli in difficoltà con la sua Leighton è un testa a coda di Bertrand Gachot che per poco non coinvolge anche la Dallara ma la coinvolta infatti notiamo una, la ruota anteriore sinistra della Dallara che non sembrava essere sistemata molto bene può darsi ci sia stata una piccola toccata Jean Alesi regge molto bene alla sfida che gli è stata portata da Piquet the, uh, the Ford V12 that may, uh, may come into action sometime this season but certainly next year Well, look, you know, to be honest, I think that the Ford's been, a, or the, the Bennett and Ford has been a little bit of a disappointment. They, <clears throat> they're the leading team with Pirelli tyres. Uh, they obviously have the, the works Ford engine. And considering that they are supposedly the world's largest manufacturer, I think they've been singularly disappointing. Um, I, I think that with the resources that they have available to themselves, uh, the Williams Renault, the Ferrari, the McLaren Honda are really showing them up. I mean, they've been in, now, they've been in Formula One now for seven years. And, and really they haven't done much. So um, let's hope that their V12 will, will you know, bring them out of the, uh, the backwaters. Let's return you now to the ESPN network. It's Bob Varja. Here's your commentary. 12 seconds. You're watching Jean Alessi in the Ferrari. There is Ayrton Senna going out the bottom of your screen. Nelson Piquet looks to be closing in a little now. Our picture's coming to us from Canadian television. Heavy braking, you can see the dark streaks on the road that show tires straining under the load, hauling these cars down 1,100 pounds apiece, plus a few pounds to make up for the ballast of the cars that are carrying the in-car cameras. And they can brake from 180 miles an hour to about 70 miles an hour in about 100 yards. Tremendous braking ability, these cars. A lot of downforce, sticky, big tires, and it just adds up to absolutely mind-blowing uh, retardation whistling down off the hill. Television really doesn't do that turn much good. We stood at the top of that hill, watched cars go away from us in practice yesterday. As you watch Nelson Piquet, cars just whistling from left to right down that hill, transferring. Drivers undergoing four G-loads. Nelson Piquet, of course, will have his uh, fingers crossed this afternoon because remember the last two races, he's only done about three laps total in the last two races. Now, moments ago, Bertrand Gascho, running in one of the Jordans, was well up in the top ten, and then something like this happened. You see one of the Leighton House cars coming through the corner. Gascho overcooked the corner onto the start, finished straight away, and nearly collected Terry Bootson, the 1989 winner of this race, in the Ligier, to the right of your screen. Terry Bootson, Emmanuel Piero there in the Dallara, made an amazing uh, miss there, and that was the thing that I saw at the top of the screen and gave that awful yelp for about ten minutes ago. That's what I saw. It just started. Using all that Formula One car braking we're just talking about. Those dark bands continue on the front tires of Jean Alesi in that red Ferrari, but he doesn't seem to be slowing down. Down. Now there is Bertrand Gascho changing the tires that he just flat spotted. Those lines we're seeing obviously aren't a problem. 
look at it, you think there's a blister line, the blister's coming up from our point of view, but obviously from them it's not. One of the things that's very important for these guys is to get the tyre pressure right. We've heard all this at Indianapolis, do you remember, last year. These guys uh, complained about the tyres being slightly overpressured, and as soon as they get overpressured, they start to skate around. The more they skate around, the more heat they put into the surface of the tyre, and boom, they blister. And I know that Goodyear have just a little bit of a problem this afternoon with these D compound tyres, they're the softest, and they want to make sure that these guys don't run them into the ground in the first few laps when the car's at its heaviest, with about 200, anywhere between 200 and 225 litres of fuel on board. Speaking of on board, you are on, and your chauffeur is the defending Formula One world champion, Ayrton Senna. A little correction coming out of that corner as he put down the foot and got the power out of the 12-cylinder Honda behind his neck. The little pedestal you see off the airbox is where the onboard camera sits. Very aerodynamic, very tiny camera. It works really well. Ayrton Senna has not got a contract with Ron Dennis and McLaren <coughs> Honda. I'll put McLaren Honda next year yet. But I've no doubt they'll be doing lots and lots of negotiating. I think John bisignano has got something for us down in the pits. John? David, just a quick update on Roberto Moreno. He came into the pits. He shut the engine off, excuse me, Ford. There was no problem with the engine, but there was a big problem with the rear suspension. The team didn't know if he had come in contact with another car, but the spin and going through the grass damaged the rear suspension where they could not continue. Moreno out of the Canadian Grand Prix. Watch Ayrton Senna flashing through the left and right complex down the hill onto the straightaway leading the pit entrance, hitting almost 190 miles an hour. Fast lap of the race, I was about to say, had been turned in by the second place Williams Renault of Ricardo Patrese, and Nigel Mansell snatched it right back. 1 minute 23.452 seconds. The Williams teammates running 1 2 in this race, and at this point, running away from it. Ayrton Senna still in the low 25, uh, 1 minute 25 second range. Mansell now into the mid 1 minute 23 as the fuel gets burnt off these cars. So consistently, Nigel stays about three quarters of a second to a second a lap ahead of his arch <laughs> nemesis, I guess. Everybody's arch nemesis. And that is, of course, this guy here, Ayrton Senna. New marketing trick there on Ayrton Senna's visor. You see the, the white band at the top of his eye says Acura on it rather than Honda. There you see Jean Alesi in the fourth place car, followed by Nelson Piquet. It is Mansell, Patrese, Senna, Alesi, Piquet, and Frost. We'll be right back. A Monte Carlo, pochi giri dalla fine, quando i box si sono trovati impreparati al rientro di Frost. Evidentemente Frost ha segnalato eh, di aver preso dello sporco, come hai detto tu, di avere magari dei problemi di gomma. A quel punto si, si è esploso il box Ferrari e ancora sono pronti all'eventuale cambio gomme. Anche se le immagini che abbiamo visto da quell'attenzione e concentrazione precedente, già quel meccanico seduto sulla gomma non dava la sensazione che una Ferrari possa poter... Cioè non c'è la sensazione che ci sia una Ferrari che può entrare improvvisamente in questo momento. C'è stato forse un primo momento di panico quando anche per loro Prost è scomparso dalla terza posizione, anzi dalla quarta dietro a Senna, probabilmente pensavano che potesse rientrare il francese a cambiare le gomme e invece questo non è successo, quindi sono ritornati in una situazione di stand by, di attesa, sempre pronti come dici tu, ma bella anche questa inquadratura, vedete Alesi quarto, segnalati tutti i vantaggi, meno un secondo, più un secondo e sei sul Piquet che lo segue da vicino, ma lo vede molto bene negli specchietti e anche nel tornante quando si fa la curva di ritorno che permette di vedere il controrettilineo nel momento in cui Piquet è in realtà in frenata, ma su queste immagini 5 secondi e poi di nuovo insieme su Jean Alesi. Amaro unico, forte come il tuono, ma buono. Si diceva di Jean Alesi impegnato nella caccia della McLaren e Ayrton Senna ha subito portato il proprio vantaggio sulla Ferrari a 2 secondi e 2, svolgendo anche e segnando anche il proprio miglior giro veloce, 1, 24, 646. Mansell has led it from the first corner and he remains your leader by now 6.4 seconds over his teammate Riccardo Patrese. There you see Jean Alesi in the Ferrari running in fourth position behind the red and white McLaren of Ayrton Senna. There is Nelson Piquet getting a lot of airtime today. A little bit back, further back in the pack, there are some good races going on. Let me run down the order. It is Mansell, Patrese, Senna, Alesi, Piquet, Frost, and Stefano Modena in seventh, followed by Andrea De Cesaris, Ivan Capelli, Terry Butson, Gianni Morbidelli, JJ Leto, Pierluigi Martini, Eric Bernard, Eric Comas, Mika Hakkinen. 
Bertrand Gasho is one lap down, followed by Maurizio Gugimin and Emanuele Piro. Ten points at stake for a victory, followed by six, four, three, two, and one. First through six earn points. Jean Alesi in the leading Ferrari. The two still active in this field. Second going out the bottom of your picture. Leads coming in on points. 40 with four victories in 1991 to 11 for Alain Prost in second. So he's got what one could call a comfortable cushion. Now it looks like we're coming into a whole bunch of slower cars here. Down to that turn 10 years. This is one of the best places to view this race. There you see those cars that are about to put a lap down. That's uh, Guzman. That's one of the Brav. That must be Martin Brundle. And at the back of the group would be one of the Dallaras. There's Nigel Mansell, the red number five. And his car showing up well as he strolls off to a easy looking lead at the moment. His tyres look certainly okay from here. Into that turn one complex, he uses that curb to pull the car around, puts his wheel up onto the curb and pulls it around. We mentioned that Nigel has bought a home in Clearwater, Florida. He has been very complimentary of Karts rules lately. Says he might like to drive at the Indy 500 someday. We asked him about the rule about new one, a three and a half liter engines. I say it straight from the hip. It will be the biggest mistake Kart can make to go to a three and a half uh, litre aspirated engine. I say this because the disparity between the engines, the fuel that you use, you just can't control it. They're unreliable. I think the, the actual regulations they have at the moment are, are pretty well fair. And, uh, you know, you've got great close racing. And if you go that route, I think it'll be the biggest sad mistake that the series will probably make. Well, there is an interesting counterpoint for you. You saw one of the minorities on the racetrack. Couldn't tell if that was Gianni Morbidelli or Pierluigi Martini stopped on the back side of the track. Guzman seems to be holding up uh, Ayrton Senna somewhat, which is very unusual. They're very close buddies, shared rooms in London for some considerable time when they were doing their Formula 3 thing back in Europe um, a long time ago. Got around them now. Uh, I don't know about that. I have to sort of disagree, I think, somewhat with Nigel. I think the three and a half litre engine formula in Indianapolis and kart racing will bring in a whole bunch of people that would ever, uh, you know, will make it more expensive and some of those privateers will go, will fall by the wayside, I'm afraid. But it could just elevate the uh, standard of racing in that type of racing. Unbelievable. Watching great racing on the track here at Montreal as the leaders lap slower cars. There's one of the Brabham's about to be taken down by the 28 of Jean Alesi running in fourth place. It's Martin Brundle, of course, because he's the only Brabham there. There's Emmanuel Piro in the V10 engine, Judd engine, Delara. That engine has gone well this year, there's no doubt about it. I believe he is now two laps down after an early pit stop. Jean Alesi moving along well. Quite the darling of our friends from Canadian television. It's a beautiful day on the Ile de Notre Dame, and we are more than a third of a way through the Grand Prix of Canada. Welcome back, wherever you're watching us right around Australia after 23 laps. Now it's Mansell for Tracy Center in the top three. We're looking at Adelaide Prost. Now, Alan, he seemed to drop back so quickly. Would he have a problem or do you think he's just conserving the motor car because of the surface? Well, Daryl, th this circuit is traditionally very hard on fuel and they are very marginal. So 
maybe he's just sort of hanging back to conserve fuel and tyres to have a bit of a charge later on because I'm a bit confused why he has dropped back. He has dropped back, but he's still staying there, so maybe he's, uh, he's doing that for a specific reason. Time will tell. Well, they do call him the Professor. Exactly. Well, plenty of cars in and out of the pits. It's certainly been a busy race and a race that we haven't seen this year. Now, here's a replay of the latest going off in a fairly big way. Yeah, he's taking a bit of a shortcut there, but I think... Dear, he's certainly giving it the major go. It looks like in the African Safari. <laughs> OK, let's go back to your commentators, David Hobbs, Bob Varsha, the ESPN Network. Failed to make it. Very unfortunate. Johnny Herbert went like a scalded cat all weekend, right in the middle of the field in all the practices and qualifying, until, of course, as usual, the one that mattered, the dry shaft broke, one lap in, and he didn't make the field. But look for good things from Johnny Herbert and the Lotus as the year unfolds. Alan Prost. Alan Prost running in sixth place, the final points paying position. He is behind Nelson Piquet by about 1.1 seconds. There you see the crane hauling off Mika Harkonnen's Lotus. If you could see that crane, you would realize how it manages to reach from way beyond the other side of that guardrail. It's got the longest jib I think I've ever seen on a crane. It is enormous, but it certainly is doing the trick. There's the pit entrance in the background. Behind it, the rowing basin that was used in the 76 Olympics. The blue flag it gives to one of the Jordans to let the Liget go by. We haven't seen that much this year. No, that was Eric Karamas with the rowing armor from the Liget trying to get around, as you say, one of the Jordans. You are on board, I believe, with Alain Prost. There's John Alessi. Perhaps you that. Alessi runs in fourth position, as he has just about from the get-go once he got around his teammate Prost, who just doesn't seem to be able to... Daylight between himself and Nelson Piquet just a few laps ago, but it certainly seems to have leveled off there. Nelson Piquet hanging on very well with the V8 engine to the V12 of Jean Alesi. Alan Prost has caught him both. Prost, the all-time leader in Formula One victories with 44, three-time world champion. Patrese is uh, six and a half seconds behind teammate uh, and team leader Nigel Mansell, and Senna is now nearly 10 seconds behind Ricardo Petrelli, so the two Williams certainly seem to have the uh, grip of this field. You saw from the in-car that as the sun goes down, shadows begin to stretch across the racetrack. It's going to make things interesting, as is a Senna. A slower car. Senna. Senna slowing on the backstretch. Senna pulled up and caused this. And Nelson Piquet must have stopped to look because the Ferraris are all over him. Ooh. I think Nelson Piquet made the most of it and got by both the Ferraris. That's a lazy slowing down. Must have been a lazy who stopped and looked. PK now, now you're on board with Senna going very slowly. Well, I think what happened was that Senna probably had a problem and pulled up very quickly in front of a lazy who obviously had to take some avoiding action, which allowed the other two to catch him up. And Moreno jumped over both uh, the other two for eyes and go around. Senna working the gear lever there. Might be a gearbox problem. As you watch Mauricio Gujumin now. Gujamin running in 17th position, a lap down. Senna just poking around the racetrack, trying to get back to the pits. He was in third place, three seconds ahead of Jean Alesi. After 25 laps, hand up to tell those behind him as he approaches the hairpin as far from the pits as you can get on this racetrack. Yeah, not a good spot to, <coughs> to be. Uh, he seems to be out of poop completely. Now then, as you said at the beginning, Senna was looking for the perfect score. Well, his perfect score is now gone away. There he is going slowly down that hairpin. He was hoping to tie Sir Jack Brabham and the late Jimmy Clark with five straight victories. Second on the all-time winning streak list behind Alberto Ascari who won nine back in 1952 and 53. Of course we have absolutely no idea of knowing what's going on. It could be something really simple like a throttle cable broken and it's just idling and taking him along at slow speed. But he has to go through these fast corners at that very slow speed which I think and he will think is extremely dangerous because, in fact, he's pulling over because once he gets in there, if you're going along, pooping along at that speed, uh, I mean, it's pretty dangerous. And so, one story has been told. The other remains. Can Nigel Mansell take the first victory for the Williams team in some time? As you mentioned before, Renault expects to see victories from the Williams team this year. And Nigel seems perfectly poised to do it. We have 10 cars on the lead lap right now. It is Mansell, Patrese, Piquet moves up into third position, taking advantage, as David mentioned, of the problems suffered by Ayrton Senna to get around Jean Alesi. Prost now also got a... And now one of the 27, that's Prost. These guys are dropping out before we can reset the order. Alain Prost with a drive line problem in the Ferrari, and he is right in front of the pits. 
he will probably try and work his way across the pit straight here to get into the pit uh, exit lane, I imagine. Is he going to do it? Cross the lap, he'll cross the track to do it. There's the end of the pit wall across the way on the left. He's going to leave it over here. He considers it to be safer over here than trying to get up on the other side, which it probably is. Maybe make it that crane you can see in the background there. Yeah, he's on the inside of the corner, so the car is on the racing line. He'll be keeping it across from him. There is Nigel Mansell. Tough break for Alon Cross, who will certainly fall out of second place in the championship chase. Dramatic moments unfolding here at the Grand Prix of Canada. The Brazilian flag waves now for Roberto Moreno because Ayrton Senna is gone. Tweet afgelopen voor Alain Prost. Dat speelt natuurlijk allemaal in de kaart van uh, Williams. De twee McLarens eruit, één Ferrari. En dat zijn de gevaarlijkste tegenstanders natuurlijk. Mensel en Patrese over u alleen nog maar. Alessi en uh, Piquet in de gaten te houden. En zorgen dat hun uh, spullen heel blijven natuurlijk. Het probleem voor uh, de Williams zou wel eens de versnellingsbak kunnen worden. Die is uh, van bij de aanvang van het seizoen niet zo erg betrouw geweest, is een betrouwbaar geweest. Is een uh, semi-automatische versnellingsbak naar het voorbeeld van Ferrari. Maar is het, uh, een paar keer stuk gegaan. In Phoenix bijvoorbeeld, in Der Lagos ook. Toen, uh, Mensel aan de fameuze wedstrijd bezig was. Maar er is serieus aan gewerkt, zegt men bij Williams. En men is nu voor 95% zeker dat de wagens en de verstellingsbakken aan de wedstrijd kunnen volmaken. Ja, dat soort uitspraken moet je natuurlijk altijd relativeren. Vanuit de lucht zien we daar Thierry Boutsen. En Boutsen zou ook geven terwijl Alessi binnen staat voor een uh, bandenwissel. Jean Alessi, daar gaat hij weer. Ik heb uh, geen tijd gezien op mijn scherm. Ik vermoed dus u thuis ook niet. Boutsen wordt ons nu gemeld, die geeft op. Problemen voor Boutsen. Hij lag op de zevende plaats in de vorige ronde, maar geeft nu op. Wordt ons gemeld, we hebben daar nog geen beeld van gezien. De 29e ronde verdwijnt Boutsen uit de wedstrijd. En hier de leider, Nigel Manson, comfortabele leider mogen we zeggen. Want zijn naam... They have imposed one penalty. At Monaco, they parked Pierre-Luigi Martini for 10 seconds for blocking, not allowing faster cars by. Martini is on the racetrack, so his teammate Johnny Morbidelli was the man driving the Minardi that we saw parked on the backstretch earlier. Your order is Nigel Mansell by 11 seconds over teammate Ricardo Patrese. Nelson Piquet in the Benetton is third, followed by the Ferrari of Jean Alesi. Stefano Modena fourth. Another car is out. This is the Lola. This must be Eric Bernard. His teammate went up in flames at the beginning of this race. That is indeed Eric Bernard, the Frenchman. Um, a lot of people say that he's as good as Jean Alesi. Let's get down to John Bisignano. Good set of Goodyears has just come in, and Alain Prost has also come into the garage. A set of Goodyears in the Ferrari garage. Lee Gog we are with. If we can get our camera, Henderson, and the door is going down. Sorry, Lee Gog, how does the wear look? Actually, the wear isn't bad, but spinning the rear tires, he's blistered his rears. And that primarily comes from low grip, not enough downforce, and wheel spin. So he actually blistered. It didn't wear him out. He got him too hot. What about the rest of the Goodyear cars? Are they going to have to stop? thing but from here from the pits the Williams look like they're good they've got a big lead they can coast now so we're hoping they don't stop 
they don't have too much wheel spin, they shouldn't have to stop. Hopefully no more wheel spin for the Goodyear boys. <laughs> In a race like this, John, it's going to be hard to prevent it. John and Lacey going around Stefan Johansson, driving for the Footwork Porsche team. Footwork team getting both cars into the race for the first time this year, and they are very happy about that. Johansson, by the way, on ESPN Speed Week earlier, I said I thought it was Johansson's eighth team in nine years. It is actually his tenth team in 11 seasons. He is the Mr. Congeniality of Formula One. He drives for everybody. And, of course, the other coincidence of driving together with Alboreto this year, they used to be Ferrari teammates back in, what, 85 and 86? I believe that's correct. Speaking of Ferraris, here comes Jean Alesi trying to avoid the bumps on the fastest part of the racetrack here in Montreal. Nelson Piquet now in third position for Benetton, followed by Lacey. And then the lap car of Steve Johnson, as he's known to his friends back in England. Seven cars remain on the lead lap. Nansel has extended his lead now to 12.3 seconds over Patrese, who has yet to come under fire from Nelson Piquet, who has now turned in fast lap of the race, however, at 1.23.9. Unlikely to come into too much trouble from Nelson Piquet, as Patrese is a cool 30 seconds ahead of Nelson Piquet. So uh, Nigel Mansell is <laughs> at the moment enjoying a 45-second lead over... Nelson Piquet, which is uh, pretty staggering. And I have no doubt that Lee Gogg from Goodyear is rather hoping that Nigel will just ease off just a little bit here because he's got this way from the bag and it would be a shame to have to stop now because they won't know really what Nelson Piquet can do with his Pirelli tires. I think they won't know what he can do for them. They might indeed. It is 32 laps complete. We're working lap number 33 of 69 scheduled. Down into the corner comes one of the Tyrrells, that is Stefano Modena, who had such a great race at Monte Carlo three weeks ago until the engine suddenly let go late in the race, took out himself. Uh, Ricardo Patrese and the third car, I think Mark Blundell and the Brabham also slid on the oil from the Tyrrell Honda of Stefano Modena and took him out of the race as well. The Tyrrell Hondas, of course, having the V10 power that took <coughs> Senna to the World Championship last year. And, of course, Prost the year before that, a tremendous power unit for the Tyrrell team. And they've gone very well this year. Not quite as well as people thought that they would go, though, I must say, overall. Next year, changes in that team. It looks as if Satoru Nakajima is going to retire. He's decided he's not too keen on all the extensive travelling for Formula 1. And so there'll be lots of people lining up to drive what is potentially one of the quickest cars out there. Ronald in fifth place. Good position to pick up points for Ken Tyrrell's team. It's amazing, actually, that his engine blew up just two weeks ago at Monte Carlo and took Ricardo Patrese out on Honda Oil. And then, hey, presto, the other morning, the same thing happened again to Ricardo. So he was getting just a bit leery about Honda Oil on racetracks. It is Mansell, Patrese, Piquet, Alese, and Marana as you watch a, tea, a boat make its way through the St. Lawrence Ship Canal. We'll be right back. Di eh, questi 34, 33 già conclusi. Quindi evidentemente il potenziale Williams è superiore a quello che sta dimostrando in questo momento. La macchina non è solamente agile, veloce, ottima trazione, ottima possibilità di sfruttamento da parte dei piloti in condizioni da qualifica. C'era molta attesa della verifica delle Williams Renault in gara perché molti dicevano che la Renault aveva dato dei motori da qualifica alla squadra Williams e che quindi ci sarebbe stato un notevole salto di qualità tra prove e gara invece eh, mi sembra che qui stiano viaggiando con gli stessi motori da qualifica delle due giornate di prove pensate che Piquet ha 46 secondi di eh, distacco da eh, Mansell e d'altra parte le due Williams Renault non hanno cambiato le gomme quindi stanno ancora marciando a questi ritmi con le Goodyear con cui sono partiti Piquet con le sue, con le sue eh, tre Pirelli morbidi e la quarta anteriore sinistra un po' più dura, ecco, eh, sta tenendo un ritmo notevole e una bellissima gara per la Benetton, trattandosi poi di un otto cilindri in attesa di questo benedetto 12.992, ma è da seguire in ogni caso la Ferrari, Alesi ha detto che con la sua macchina dopo aver scaricato tutta la sua irruenza nei primi giri di gara avrebbe fatto un po' di attesa, un po' di tattica per tutta la parte centrale della gara per verificare in che condizioni si trovava la sua macchina e poi avrebbe deciso come cominciare a gestire la sua Ferrari nella parte finale ma su queste immagini di Piquet 5 secondi e poi di nuovo insieme 
the World Championship team. Stay with us. Comunque sarà molto difficile per Jean Alesi andare a prendere un Nelson Piquet che ha migliorato ulteriormente il proprio limite 1.23. Football of sports. Well, Alan Jones, you can see why the Canadians, not so much like the Americans, get a bit confused with Formula One when you have so many cars dropping out on a race like this. Tonight it does make it a bit tough for them to understand from a purist point of view. Well, yeah, I guess, and also the amount of hair. It looks like we've got a Lacey slowing up now as well, so that's probably... That's Yep, so that we have two McLarens, two Ferraris out. So, as you were just saying, they probably are being confused why so many retirements, as indeed I am, to be honest with you. Well, we heard about the Goodyear tyres <laughs> spinning all the time. Well, obviously, the track's so bumpy that the cars just can't get traction. I mean, the wheels are just spinning around and blistering tyres. Well, as they, lift, as they leave the surface, of course, and then they come back down, it's the equivalent to an aeroplane. When you see an aeroplane land, the smoke comes up. So that's generating a lot of heat into the tyres and blistering, but it's also playing absolute havoc on the drive shafts and the, and the drive train of the, and not to mention the gearboxes. And that looks like it's a fairly terminal piece of work from the Ferrari as well. Interesting to see the Ferrari is sporting a new sponsor for the first time in the, in the shape of Pioneer, which is very unusual for the Italian equip. Okay, so there we have it. The two Ferraris now out, the two McLarens are out. I don't know if we're going to have anyone left at the end, but Nigel's going very, very well in the Williams. They're still running. Let's go. Let's take you back to ESPN. It's a long way to, to, to move that bump, but it's pretty bad. And so, um, as he flashes across the start finish line, Nigel's lead over his teammate Ricardo Patrese. It's a cool nearly 16 seconds, 15.79 seconds. Around that turn one complex, just clips that curb on the inside, helps the car around by putting his wheels up on that inside curb. Not quite the same as putting his wheels on the outside curb. We have seen so many blown engines this weekend, David. Six on Friday morning alone in first practice. We're just getting to the part of the season where we'll hit the wide open circuits where these guys will be revving these things up to 14, 15,000 RPM. We'll be in Mexico City in two weeks where the altitude is 7,400 feet. That's not a good sign, I should think. Well, as it gets more and more competitive, we saw the grid was so close together. These guys, of course, have got to try harder and harder. And, of course, the way you get more power and more speed out of a race car is to rev it more. And the more you rev it, they just get to the point where they've got to give up. John Lacey waving to the crowd. There's Stefan Johansson. Having a moment in the Formula One Ooh, sun. Is this car smoking? Is that Porsche engine smoking as he went out of the corner? This is about to be like lapped again by Nigel Mansell. What, we doing two or three laps down? Let's say several. I tell you what, the footwork team will take a finish if they can get one. Watch the closing speed of Nigel Mansell coming by Stefano Modena. Yeah, excuse me, Stefan Johansson. The Williams cars this year, of course, have shown that they are absolutely capable of winning races. Had a tremendous run at Rio in the hands of Ricardo Patrese and, of course, Mansell before he had a problem. At Monte Carlo, he had a great second spot. And, of course, Patrese led at Imola. So these cars... This is no real surprise. This is a battle for position. This is Ivan Capelli in fifth place. Behind him, the red Dallara of J.J. Leto from Finland. Leto had a great race in Imola, winning his first podium in the San Marino Grand Prix. Protégé of former world champion K.K. Rosberg of Finland, who also has Mika Hakkinen, who was already out of this race when his Lotus hit the gravel trap. J.J. Leto, of course, <coughs> another graduate of the British Formula 3 Championship, which is the way to get into Formula 1. Two other classic examples being Senna, Martin Brundle, Stefan Johansson, Jonathan Palmer, J.J. Leto, all absolute clear winners in their year of that series. Leto now giving um, Ivan Capelli a good run for his money in that car. And they're looking for fifth. That's fifth and sixth spot. They are both in the points, both using new engines in Formula 1 this year. The Leighton House car has the Ilmore V10, the same folks who brought us the Chevy Indy V8. And that red Dallara is powered by John Judd out of Great Britain. His V10, also looking for a corporate nameplate on the valve covers. Both going well. The Leighton House car, the Aqua car in front, apparently needs a very smooth racetrack to perform well, such as they'll see next week at Mexico City and down the road at Magni Cour in France. The Dallara perhaps a little bit more amenable. J.J. Leto may just be biding his time. John Jett's concern, I believe, is owned in part by Sir Jack Brabham. I think it's owned uh, quite largely by Sir Jack Brabham. I don't know. If John Judd turns up at the butcher's own. We've heard me mention this place before. And he's new Mercedes 560, so the engine business can't be too bad. Leto with a little bit of oil on the front of the helmet. 
We are just past halfway in the 69 lap race. The circuit, 2.75 miles around. They actually lengthened the circuit when they modified the quarter this year by about 150 feet. And of course, as is usual in motor racing, the cars promptly went six tenths of a second faster. And of course, it's a slower corner. Another interesting point about this, we've got two English built V10s, the Illinois engine in the Leighton House car, the Judd engine in the red Delara here, and of course the Delara is on Pirelli's and the Leighton House is on Goodyear. Leighton House have had such a mixed year since mixed years since we saw him do so well to Pelly in the original Leighton House back in like 1989. The Leighton House car with Ivanka Pelly pulls away a little bit. There is Frank Williams. Patriarch of the Williams Formula One team, Annie Bradshaw, their PR representative next to him. It's quite a day for Williams here in Canada. We'll be back in Italia di Goodyear, battaglia di Pirelli, Scuderia Italia. Mandiamo la linea a Patricia in box per vedere se sa qualcosa della Ferrari. Guarda, della Ferrari in questo momento non so niente, però sono qui con Ron Dennis. What has it to send to Ayrton? At the moment we think we had an electrical fault. How do you feel the first time this year that you don't have car in the race? I'll try not to get used to it. Allora non sanno ancora nulla per quanto riguarda il ritiro di Senna, perché Senna ha rotto tutto, ha rotto anche la radio e non è ancora riuscito a comunicare con i box. Comunque il morale di Ron, nonostante tutto, non è, non è completamente abbattuto da quanto è la prima volta che gli succede di non avere le due macchine in gara. Sì, anche la battuta di Ron Dennis in risposta alla domanda birichina di Patricia Piccher è stata beh, cerchiamo di non abituarci a non avere due macchine in gara. Beh, avete visto che anche la voce di Ron Dennis era un pochino rotta e probabilmente il fatto che Senna non sia riuscito neanche a comunicare via radio ai box può significare che è una pan elettrica, non un problema di elettronica, ma proprio a livello di batteria che è andata a zero, ha impedito, ha spento il motore, ma ha impedito anche le comunicazioni via radio. In ogni caso, sempre grande battaglia, 39 giri, Guido Schiptone classifica dei sopravvissuti, sono 15 fino a questo momento, anche se gli ultimi sono veramente tanto staccati dai primi. Primi due naturalmente Nigel Mansell e Riccardo Patrese, terzo posto per Nelson Piquet che ha diminuito il suo distacco, si trova a 32 secondi dal pilota padovano e a 49 da quello inglese. Quarto posto per Stefano Modena, quinto e sesto per i due che state vedendo, ovvero Ivan Capelli con la Leighton Ilmor e JJ Leto con la Dallara. Al settimo posto un altro pilota italiano, Andrea De Cesaris, che ha rimontato bene con la Jordan. All'ottavo lo straordinario. Downtown will be down there shortly, David. When this race wraps up, it's been a great one thus far. There you see the battle. Excuse me, not a battle. Here comes your race leader, Nigel Mansell. Well, that's Riccardo Excuse Patrese. Me, is that Riccardo Patrese? Riccardo Patrese about to put a lap on Maurizio Guglielmin. He just handled this game, but I didn't. <laughs> Riccardo Patrese took his fourth pole in a record 213 Grand Prix starts, but his neck was giving him all kinds of trouble after he cracked his helmet in a vicious crash on Friday. There is Nigel Mansell, our leader, I do believe. 17.1 seconds ahead of teammate Riccardo Patrese. And recall that two years ago, Williams went 1-2 in this race in the hands of Terry Butson and, Picard and Riccardo Patrese. John Bisignano has a comment from the pit lane. Riccardo Patrese, in that accident, they have a G meter inside the car, and his body succeeded 10 Gs. The G meter was pinned on 10. Now, anyone who flies an airplane knows that a G-force around six can cause blacking out. So if you can imagine, over 10 Gs for Cardinal Patrese hitting very hard on Friday. Terrible crash. No wonder they got a car on the track and that Ricardo Patrese was able to get into it. Not only is it in it, he is driving magnificently. He runs second to this man. Whoops. Back to back. Red number five. Nigel Mansell on lap 41 just cranked off a 123.2 which is the fastest lap of the race to date. Not quite a new lap record yet, but still a long way to go and a lot of fuel to use up. Just past halfway, we're working lap number 42. <laughs> 69 laps in the race. One of the Williams cars, Patrese pitting very slowly. Is the wing broken? Huh. Just... Let's get down to John Bisignano. As you say, Riccardo Patrese is coming down the pit lane very slow. The Williams boys were surprised by him coming into the pits. The engine is running. The right rear tire looks a little bit flat. They are changing all four tires. An awful lot of smoke off the back end of the car. That's the dust.
dust from the carbon fiber. But my gosh, the right rear did look like it was a bit askew, but everything seems right. He's trying to get in the gear. This is semi automatic, and he is out of here. Carl Patrick, very close fit, fits up. He must be missing a few gears. Well, he came in with the left front up in the air, which either meant that the left front was bent or the right rear was down. There is Nelson Piquet. Probably a flat right rear, one would think. Nelson Piquet, of course, now moves up into second spot in the Pirelli shot V8 engine Benetton car. V12 engine coming for these guys next year. Out of Ford. Going to be interesting to see what they can do with that because this engine. This V8 engine revs to cool 13,000 odd RPM in a V8 form, which is absolutely astronomical. If they get the same technology into a V12, they'll be cranking around at about 16,000 RPM. Cosworth Engineering says they'll get it up to 16,000. What's that, about 250 revolutions per second? Awful lot. Makes a lot of noise. Sound good at Indy, though, isn't it? Indeed. For those of you wondering about former Benetton driver Sandro Nanini, who had that horrific accident where the helicopter blade severed his right arm, it was re... Hier nu niet meer bij is in de Formule 1, die werd toen zesde. Piquet die heeft, uh, houdt u zich goed vast, 52 seconden achterstand op Nigel Manzo. En ze draaien bij allebei tijden van... Uh, 1.24 per ronde nu. Patrese die is uh, weer op weg. Met nieuwe banden. En daar staat uh, Ivan Capelli. Een hevig rokende motor. Opgave voor Ivan Capelli. De vijfde op rij. Terwijl hij op die mooie vijfde plaats zat. Jammer voor deze Italiaan. Maar je kan niet zeggen dat er geen regelmaat in zijn resultaten zit. Working lap 45 of 69 schedule. Thank you, Dudley Do-Right. Ricardo Patrese, who pitted just moments ago while running sixth, is now, excuse me, while running second, is now back to fifth place behind this man, his teammate, Nigel Mansell, and John Bisignano. And the pit lane has more on Patrese. John? Well, Bob, one of the reasons he lost so much time out on the track is because it was a long stop. He came in, his right rear was flat, and he just had to be very careful coming into the pit lane. He is okay in the gearbox. I thought that when he was trying to get it into gear, he did have some trouble, but everything is actually working very fine. With these new tires, he should be very, very quick. Well, he's going to need to be. He is running in fifth place, 9.5 seconds down to the fourth place car of young J.J. Leto. Nigel Mansell has 55.4 seconds in hand over the second place Benetton of Nelson Piquet. Now, moments ago, we had another drama. Ivan Capelli running in fourth place for the Leighton House team that desperately needs championship points, parked his car out on the backside with another blown engine. Tough break for them. They will find themselves in pre-qualifying at the halfway point of the season if they're not careful, which means they have to go out at 8 o'clock on a Friday morning on a dirty racetrack and try to beat all but three other cars in hopes of making the main qualifying sessions on Friday and Saturday afternoons of any Formula One weekend. Yeah, tough break for him. He was going extremely well. He was up to fourth spot. So um, that is very, very disappointing for that team. No problem is evident for Nigel Mansell. Three cars remain on the lead lap. Nigel Mansell, Nelson Piquet, and Stefano Modena in the Tyrrell. J.J. Leto runs in fourth place for the Dallara, picking up valuable points that will get them out of the pre-qualifying core. Ricardo Patrese running well now in fifth position, but a lap down. Andrea De Cesaris in sixth. Pierre Luigi Martini in seventh. Bertrand in eighth. Eric Coma in ninth. Two laps down. Ivan Capelli was before he blew the engine. Piro runs tenth now. Mauricio Gujalmin 11th, Satoru Nakajima 12th, and Stefan Johansson, I believe, has parked the footwork Porsche. In fact, we may see it in one of these shots. I saw it over on the left side of the racetrack. He has shown five laps down, quite obviously out of the race. 
In the fastest lap of the race still belongs to Nigel Mansell at 1 minute 23.2 seconds. Getting down towards lap record time. Here at 122, 1 minute 22 seconds of change. It is a very warm afternoon. Temperature getting up to about 85, 86 degrees. The breeze has abated somewhat. And here is a team backing up to go home. McLaren, both cars out of the race. Ferrari, both cars out of the race. When was the last time we saw that? And the Williams uh, of Nigel Mansell serenely going on his way there. Here we see him coming into the, in the back side of the circuit. The shadows getting longer and longer. Light getting more difficult as those shadows deepen and get darker across the track. It's hot out there too at the moment. Sitting in the sun as it shines on him in the car. It's extremely hot in any racing car and of course these are no real exception. Under the bridge, the oil flag out there. Gently, Nigel. Oil, of course, or debris, depending. But it's just a warning flag for the drivers. That is the yellow flag of the red stripe. This has been quite a weekend in Canada. On Friday, there was a fire in a telephone transformer. We had no telephone communication with the outside of the racetrack for any purpose on Friday. And if you ever want to see chaos in your life, try and get all of these multi-million dollar teams and some 1,600 journalists from around the world and not a telephone to be had. A view of the Jacques Cartier Bridge over the mighty St. Lawrence River. We're live in Montreal. We'll be right back. Resultaten van de voorbije twee halve seizoenen, dus uh, de tweede helft van het seizoen 90 en de eerste van het seizoen 91. En zoals de situatie op dit ogenblik is, zijn de teams die uh, punten behalen er praktisch zeker van dat ze uit die prekwalificaties kunnen wegblijven. En dat wil iedereen wel natuurlijk. Hier hebben we Patrese. Die daar aan de binnenkant voorbij een van de Dalaras gaat. Het was uh, Lechto die Patrese daar uh, voorbij ging. Althans, ik moet me duidelijk uitdrukken: Patrese ging Lechto voorbij. Dat betekent dat de uh, Italiaan weer op de vierde plaats zit. De Finn dus vijfde. Daar hebben we Cachot in het spoor van Martini. Dat is dus een gevecht om de zevende plaats. Martini is zevende, Cachot achtste. Daar staat Stefano Modena in de pits voor een bandenwissel. Zo mogen we aannemen. Modena die op de... Am I correct to come in and pit for what is apparently tire wear quite late in the race? Now, moments ago, to the left of your screen, J.J. Leto in third position. To the right, Ricardo Patrese, who is on new Goodyear tires, and he is ripping through this field. Here is the pass on Leto for third place. The way that uh, Williams <coughs> can keep that tight line around that 10 hairpin there shows that the car's got great grip, and of course, it's absolutely rocking it off with the Renault V10 horsepower. Comes Andre de Cesaris and the Jordan, who began his excuse me, Fairford Gash. Boy, I had a great story about Andre de Cesaris, too. Here's the pass. Gasho on Pierre Luigi Martini in the black and yellow Minardi with Ferrari V12 power. That V8 Ford got him under braking. Into turn 10 again. Now we see Gasho again with the 7 up Jordan, V8 engine. They have like one or two systems behind the Benetton Ford engine. The big question is, of course, will they get the V12? Probably a year after Benetton do. There is Pierre Luigi Martini, who suffered a terrible weekend at Monte Carlo three weeks ago. He was roundly pounded by the other drivers for holding things up time and again. And he holds the distinction of the first and only Formula One driver to be penalized during a race this year for blocking. He was parked for 10 seconds at Monte Carlo. Gearbox troubles kept them back this year. Here see Bertrand Gascho. He's been shown in all of the official standings this year as being French. Now, previously, he was using a Belgian passport. He was born in Luxembourg. His parents have mixed nationalities. He is truly a European. 
And that's what he likes to call himself. That little blue flag you see with a circle of stars on his helmet, emblematic of a unified Europe. Ricardo Petrese has just done the fastest lap of the race at a 122.6. That's his new tyres. There we see him. This is a lap after his fastest lap. So Ricardo Petrese on his way up through the field, trying to get at least that second spot back from Nelson Piquet. There is Nigel Mansell as our Canadian television friend split between the two cars. Looked like they had a little smoke there Somebody at the bottom of the field. Somebody's smoking as they went out of the picture. Yeah, we can't see it. Can't see it. We can catch up with it. oh, it's Stephanie Johnson. Well, it was smoking there yeah, <laughs> 10 laps ago, so it's still keeping going. Well, I jumped to the conclusion that Steph right there in the footwork Porsche was out of the race earlier, but he has still shown five laps down. So he must he's have had a long stop somewhere or something, because mm -hmm. he we keep getting his lap time, which is pretty slow. He's lapping at about 1 minute 30, 1 minute 29, everybody else is lapping in between 24 and 26. There's Ricardo Patrese now. You saw the Williams team earlier looking like they were ready for a stop. Crazy fires down the front straightaway, 170 miles an hour or so, then breaking hard for the turn one and two complex here at Montreal. This is not a race known for tremendous attrition over the years, but we've certainly had it today. We show 13 cars still running of the 26 that started. Half the field is gone. We are working lap number 51 of 69. Let's get a comment about Ricardo Patrese's situation from the pit lane and John. By Ricardo Patrese was fitted with the very soft D Goodyear compound that has a lot of grip. Most people started with it, but the reason he's faster now is, of course, is that two-thirds of his fuel load is gone. Ricardo Patrese is flying around this track in record-breaking time. And, of course, Frank Williams and everyone down here in this pit hopes he continues. Well, I'm sure he hopes he continues, too. They've had a bit of a... A slightly unlucky season. He was very unlucky, of course, at Monte Carlo to get involved in somebody else's engine blow up because I think that Ricardo Patrese could have easily finished second again there, which would be a big help, of course, to his world championship points. There is Nigel Mansell making his way around 58 seconds clear of Nelson Piquet. Mansell hopes to break his tie with Sterling Moss as the most victorious Formula One drivers in history never to win the world championship. We zitten op de zevende plaats hier in deze grote prijs van Canada. En hij zal het daar vermoedelijk niet willen bij laten. Deze man nog altijd ruim aan de leiding. En nog altijd met dezelfde banden. Geen beeld meer op dit moment vanuit Montreal. En nu blijven we ook nog uh, verstoken van klank. Problemen dus met de lijnen vanuit Canada. Dat is ook al het geval bij het begin. Modena de Cesar is nog in de punten. Dan Gachot op plaats 7. Der, dat konden ze ook zien, aan Martini voorbij is. Martini op plaats 8 voor Comas, Piro, Gusselmin, Nakajima en Johansson. Dat zijn die 13 fahrer die nog in... En daar... Tietje Lechto, die uh, vijfde was, dat betekent dat Gachot nu in de punten zit. De Finn Lechto. Back live for the Canadian Grand Prix out of Montreal. Ricardo Patrese on fresh rubber. He's really starting to motor now, but I think Nigel at this stage seems to have a really handy lead. Yeah, I think he's going to run out of time. He's doing consistently quicker, quickest laps, but um, I think uh, he, might, he came in at the right time, but he may have left it a bit late. It'll be very interesting. That'll certainly be the highlight of the race to see if he can close that gap to, uh, to his team leader. Frank Williams would be delighted. Been a long time, you know, coming, hasn't it? It certainly has, and what a great result to do a 1-2 for him. Okay, is John Bisignano. It'll be interesting to see what he's got to report from the pits. The lead is not good enough to come in and make a pit stop. He hates the pits. You know he's had some tough times in here before. He is going to stay out on the track and try and make those tires last. He's in the lead and he wants to stay there. As you watch Pierre Luigi Martini make his way around, you caught a look there at J.J. Leto, the young Finn who had climbed out of his Dallara. He was in fourth place at the time. He has parked it. And we are now down to 12 runners in this race. 
Here comes old Nige. I mentioned that he is trying to break a tie with Sterling Moss on 16 career victories among drivers who have never won the world championship. And of course that would give him one more victory than Sterling, which would in fact make him the most victorious Englishman as opposed to Britain uh, of all time. The two most victorious Britons being Jimmy Clark on 33 wins and Jackie Stewart on 27. Uh, Jackie Stewart on 27 and Jimmy Clark. Nigel is still cranking out laps in the 25 range, 1 minute 25, although that last one was a 27, 1 minute 27 second, but I think he probably got held up by somebody. <coughs> and Nelson Piquet is consistently just a little bit quicker, but he's a long way behind. He's 56 seconds behind. I don't see him as a big threat, and I don't think that uh, Nigel does either, because with all said and done, he's only got 20 odd laps to go. Ricardo Patrese is lapping in the 123 range. There you see Andrea De Cesaris, who began his Formula One career in this race. Now in his 154th Grand Prix start, longest among any Grand Prix driver without a single victory. He turned 32 back on Friday. 154 Grand Prix at 32 years of age. This Jordan car, by the way, will not win the race today, but the Jordan team has been victorious thus far on the weekend. On Friday, they held a mechanics raft race on the Olympic rowing basin behind the pits, and the Jordan team came through with a resounding victory, and in the inimitable Formula One tradition, immediately issued a blizzard of press releases having their achievement. It's very important, of course, for this Jordan team of De Cesaris and Gasho to get points to try and get themselves out of the diabolical pre-qualifying on Friday morning, which everybody just absolutely hates. That is over involvement. We are working lap number 55. Let's get down to the pit lane once again with John Bisignano. Alain Prost went out of the Canadian Grand Prix with a gearbox problem. That's an automatic gearbox in, in his car, in that Ferrari. And his teammate, John Alisi, went out with motor problems. They don't know exactly what they were, but the V12 gave up on the Ferrari. They don't have the car back, so they can't tell us exactly what it was. And Ayrton Senna, the man who has won the first four Grand Prix so far this year, that beautiful V12 Honda gave up with electrical problems. Very unusual. This has been a very tough circuit for the top runners. Indeed it has been. There's Bertrand Gasho. You got to look at that flag on his helmet that I was speaking of earlier. Of course, one of the things that makes it tough on the cars, although they've resurfaced <coughs> the circuit here at Gilles Villeneuve, it's still very, very bumpy. And there's no doubt about it that these electronic components, the computers, the onboard computers, the wiring, it's tough for them to stand all that shaking around all the time. And running right now in lockstep, Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Patrese, first and third on the racetrack. But, of course, Patrese is a lap down. And, of course, the thing is, will Nigel let him go around here, get his lap back, and set off in real serious pursuit with Nelson Piquet? Yes, he has. Nicely done, gentlemen. Piquet lapping at about, uh, excuse me, uh, Ricardo Patrese lapping at about 124. Nigel at about 125, almost 126. At this point, Nigel has taken a page from the book of Ayrton Senna and Alain Pross and is going just as fast as you think he needs to in order to win this race with 13 laps remaining this time around. Essential for Nigel for a number of reasons to try and win this race. A lot of pressure on him, a lot of pressure on the Williams team. Stephen Johansson coming in on the footwork Porsche. They are pitted at the far end of the pit lane. Tough break for them. That footwork Porsche team desperately looking for a finish in 1991. Let's get down to John. Both cars from the footwork Porsche team were in the pits earlier with stuck throttle cables. Identical problems. They could not fix Alboretto's, and Stefan Johansson went back out with somewhat of a dodgy cable. It's a very brave man. We'll try and find out why he came back in this time, but as you said, they really needed a result to try and keep them out of the very difficult pre-qualifying. Well, of course, the trouble is with the speed that they've been turning in most of the races in the official qualifying, they, of all people, will never get through that pre-qualifying session, and that'll be just disastrous for somebody with the reputation that Porsche has got to be into the pre-qualifying in the first place, and then to not even get out of pre-qualifying is going to be even more desperate. Well, the pre-qualifying teams are definitely performing well. The Dallaras and the Jordans ran well. Thank you. Als ze uh, bang zijn dat de banden te warm gaan worden, dan draaien ze even twee, drie ronden wat trager, zodat die weer wat kunnen afkoelen. 
We zijn op 15 ronden van het einde van deze grote prijs. Een grote prijs die behoudens ongelukken of mechanische pech zal gewonnen worden door deze man, Nigel Manson. Er zijn er al twee voorbij, Gujel Min. En Menzel is blijkbaar uh, toch van plan om Patrese weer op een ronde te rijden. Dit moet een uh, prachtig gezicht zijn voor uh, Frank Williams. Nigel Menzel, aan de leiding van een grote prijs. Montreal, Canada, in the Grand Prix of Canada, you see the pit board there for Nigel Mansell with the British Union Jack up in the corner. They're taking off the word fuel. John Visignano down in the pit lane has some speculation for us as to what that might mean, John. Well, Bob, we certainly don't hope that the computers may be giving a readout that his car is running too rich. The engine management system controls the fuel flow, and they could be getting signs back to the computer bank saying to ease off, Nige, ease off, you got a good lead, and save the fuel. It would be just disastrous for him to run out now. Well, of course, it would be disastrous. These normally aspirated engines don't soak up the fuel like the old turbo engines did, but even so, this is a very, as John would say, fuel-rich circuit. And uh, they do use a lot of fuel here on a day like today, especially. So we see Nelson Piquet in the V8. The V8, of course, would expect to use less fuel than the V10 engine. Ricardo Patrese set the fast lap of the race back on 48 as you watch Nelson Piquet at 122.672. We may not see a faster one as all the drivers begin to concern themselves with fuel. V10 engines, the Renaults in the cars of Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Patrese running 1-3. They're going to use more fuel in all likelihood than the V8 in a car like Nelson Piquet's. Now he is lapping at about 123, Nigel at about 126. So the final word on this race has not yet been said. But Piquet is still 47 off seconds behind Nigel Mansell. And as you say, there's only 12 laps to go. Nigel Mansell came across that time at 124.4. I think that uh, Nelson Piquet at this point is burning up the racetrack. Modern are also turning into very respectable that there, 123.8. If you could do a few more of those, he'd be right up at the front there. He's in fourth position at the moment. Fifth and sixth are held by the two Jordan cars, <coughs> the seven up Jordans, and of course that'll be great for their pre qualifying hopes. As we work lap 59 with 10 to go, let's recap the field. It is Mansell, followed by PK, 47 seconds, 48 seconds and change now behind Mansell. Third is Ricardo Patrese, the only other car in the lead lap after having passed his teammate. Then Stefano Modena, Andrea De Cesaris, Bertrand Gascho, Pierluigi Martini, Eric Comas, Emanuele Piro still in the hunt. I thought both Galares were out, but he is still out there circulating two laps down, followed by Satoru Nakajima and Maurizio Gugelmi. Down to turn 10 for Nelson Piquet. There we see Bujamin just going out of the picture in the <coughs> Leighton House. Nope, that's one of the Jordans no up there. Oh, is it? Sorry. Another green car. <laughs> Through this dauntingly fast, when you stand there, in real live flesh and watch those cars go through there. I mean, that really does make the hands on the back of your head stand up. It is very, very fast through there. And we saw Eric Comas have quite a moment going through there in qualifying yesterday afternoon. Absolutely sideways under the bridge, just snapped it back around, never lifted his foot, rocketed it off down yeah, the fastest was, part of the racetrack. That was what you could call, if it was in skating, that would have been a snap turn. He'd have got a 9.9 for that one. I tell you, it was pretty hair-raising to watch. There is your leader, the red number five of Nigel Mansell. You see those 
Molson beer billboards in the background. Such are the marketing wars in Formula One. Molson's got into a big litigation with another Canadian brewer over the rights to this race a few years ago. In fact, the race wasn't held in 1987, I believe, as a result of that fight. Now Molson won the rights, spent all that money, paid all those lawyers, and who's running 1-3 in the race? That other brewery, Labatt's. The Williams team. Such is life, as you say, or such is the racing. Into the turn one complex. Still using that curb. Nigel really liked to use that inside curb. I notice Ricardo Patrese does not use it as much. It's not harmful to the car in any way to run the wheel up on the inside like that. It's very, very unloaded, those wheels. And it sometimes helps to pull the car around if you've got just a little bit of understeer. Helps to make it rotate, as they say at the Skip Barber Driving School. 60 laps of 69 complete. Nigel Mansell lap at 125.5 the last time around. Still comfortably out front. Nelson Piquet has closed it up to 48.4 seconds behind Nigel Mansell. Patrese is still right there on the lead lap, and going as fast as he can, but mindful of the fuel situation in his V10. Well, flag out back there. Nelson Piquet is now being told we, we somehow missed it up here. Uh, at, so, at one stage did pick, which might explain why he's quite so far down and why he's going so fast now. 47.6 seconds now the gap as Nelson Piquet right there in that yellow and green Benetton closes up inexorably on Nigel Manson. We have official word now, Stephen Johansson suffered engine failure in his footwork Porsche. Porsche engine has not been a roaring success this year to date, there's no doubt about it. Now, of course, if they had sticking throttle, that's the sort of thing that can easily blow an engine because if it keeps on sticking wide open every time you want to shift gears and you have to keep pushing the clutch in to stop yourself running into things, uh, that's not very good for the engine. There's that yellow flag out again, or the oil flag, the yellow and red stripe flag. It is very, very hot. The racetrack might indeed be getting slick after all of these race cars have made their way through and all of the engine detonations we've seen today. But things are wrapping up very shortly. Come personale, qui Riccardo Patrese sta tenendo bene il proprio terzo posto dagli attacchi che gli sta portando Stefano Modena. Uno Stefano Modena che in questo giro ha percorso i 4.430 metri del percorso in 1.24.94. La classifica ve l'ho appena letta eh, pochi secondi fa. Riccardo Patrese sta dimostrando di essere un pilota molto regolare. Vi ricordiamo che corre in condizioni fisiche menomate, ma grazie al cuore, grazie a questa sua tremenda volontà, riesce sempre a ben figurare, riesce sempre a eh, dimostrare di essere uno dei cinque migliori piloti del mondo, uno dei pochi che possono fregiarsi del titolo di antisenna della situazione, un titolo che potrebbe in futuro vantare anche Stefano Modena, uno Stefano Modena che qui non ha commesso alcun errore, si attendeva onestamente molto di più da parte della propria Tyrrell che con Alesi l'anno scorso era andata veramente molto bene. Purtroppo la Tyrrell, eh, questo nuovo telaio 020, ha grossi problemi di sospensioni e Stefano deve accontentarsi. È andato fortissimo a Imola, è andato fortissimo a Monte Carlo. Qui si è dovuto accontentare ma sta portando a conclusione la sua gara al quarto. Con il commanding leader di Nelson PK, Patrese fought il suo way back in the third place. Stefano Modena, un very good uh, result for him again. Andrew De Cesaris is there and Gashot too. Well, Alan, it's been a, a, a race of mixed fortunes. We've had such a set pattern right throughout the season, and along comes a Canadian Grand Prix and blows it all out the door. Well, exactly, and just as I said at the beginning of the uh, evening, is that uh, PK, uh, uh, Nigel Mansell's retired mentally, he's now romping in the Canadian Grand Prix. You also mentioned a fuel problem, and uh, that's the signs of things coming out that they must conserve their fuel. Yeah, I just saw an oil flag out there then too, which means that yet another engine's probably blown up and deposited all over the place. Now, it is extremely difficult on fuel, this circuit, and um, their onboard computers will tell them... Hello, going a bit wide there, possibly on the oil. Uh, their onboard computers will tell them exactly how much fuel they've got left and how long they've got to go, and they'll have to ease back on the throttle a little bit and make sure they don't use all that fuel. And new surface too. I mean, they, they wouldn't have had a lot of time to test, only the, the, the official practice times. No, well, I mean, they, only, they can't uh, test there before they go there, so there would have been a lot of guesswork tyre-wise. OK, well, let's take you back to the ESPN network now, and you're watching the Canadian Grand Prix live and exclusive here on Nines Wide World of Sports. This stage for a fourth-place finish, which would give him uh, six points in the World Championship. We're jumping up, oh, golly, to equal um, fourth with a number of people. 
Remember, in the World Championship this year, all 16 races will count. So, and Ayrton Senna could not drop his DNF today from his final standings. Every point gained against the overall leader, Senna, the runaway leader in the World Championship, are points that will stick. And every point lost is lost forever. Upwards. Current standings, working lap number 64, Mansell by some 47 seconds over Nelson Piquet, no longer making inroads as you watch, that's Andrea de Cesaris making his way around. Mansell, Piquet, Petrezzi, Stefano Modena, one lap down. Andrea de Cesaris right there, running in fifth spot. He'll pick up some points. It's been a while for Andrea. Bertrand Gasho, his teammate, runs in the sixth position. First points for the Jordan team this year. Eddie Jordan will be jumping up and down. In seventh position, Pierre Luigi Martini also a lap down. Two laps down, Eric Comas in eighth, followed by Emanuele Piro, two laps down in ninth. Three laps down, Satoru Nakajima, and Tyrrell, and Maurizio Gujolin in the Leighton House car. Now we see Petrezzi. Seven up Jordan, coming to the head, moving the fast bit. These cars, just right out of the box, went very well. Designed by Gary Anderson for Eddie Jordan. Very famous and very successful campaigner in the Formula 3000 series, which is the stepping stone to Formula One in European racing. There is Nigel Mansell, but the Jordan cars, I was about to say, David, in only their fifth race are in position to score points. That's quite an achievement. Well, absolutely, and it's just ten years ago, in a couple of weeks' time, that young Edward Jordan and myself drove a BMW M1 in the Le Mans 24-hour race together. Le Mans coming your way in about two weeks here on ESPN. David and I hope to be there to tell you all that we can about sports cars and what, to my mind, I have to say, is the greatest race in the world, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Nigel Mansell closing up on Ricardo Petrezzi there again. I would imagine that if they do finally get this down to an absolute dead cert, i.e. the last lap, that the team there, we see a very disappointed Ayrton Senna, still holds a huge lead in the World Championship. And the next closest runner, assuming it's Nigel Mansell, will end up with 16. So, not in any real danger as yet. Gap from 31 to 24, 39 that is, to 24, pretty sizable jump. But of course, it's one of those things, racing being what it, all it needs is another weekend like this, and suddenly, it looks rather different. I'm sure if we get down to the last lap, and they're absolutely sure, as a team, that they are going to come first and third, that they will <coughs> let Nigel go through and take the checkered flag. And correct my mathematics, from 29 points of the cross coming in to 24 of a Mansell going out. We have a new fast lap from old Nige, 122.385. Maurizio Guggenheim in the Lincoln House car. Mm, it's disappointing, there's just so few left to go. What a heartbreak for them. They started the year with a bizarre case of vandalism. Someone got to these cars in Phoenix, Arizona, cut some brake lines. It's popularly thought at that time to have been a disgruntled former member of the team. Squirrels about the word, I guess, for poor Maurizio Gujami. Which leaves us with 10 cars of the 26 that started, still circulating. Here comes Andrea de Cesar. Oh, is that Gasho? Is he Gasho. They've done it to me again. Mansell, Piquet, Patrese, Madonna, de Cesaris, Gasho, Martini, Comas, Piro, and Nakajima. Now out of the field, so that's only 10 cars running. It looks working. like Gasho is going to try and take not a position back from Piquet, but he's going to help himself get back onto that lap. These cars are now about to turn for the hairpin, the farthest point on the circuit from the start-finish line, which Nigel Mansell has just crossed to complete lap number 66. Three laps remaining. They're watching live the Grand Prix of Canada. The grandstand still packed. A huge crowd on hand. You get to this island circuit by crossing one of two walkover bridges. And they have been packed. Look at that grandstand in the background. A lot of people here, <laughs> and of course, now we more oil down. This is the thing off like there before. It may be just for the debris. You can see on that long shot how the rolled up rubber from all these tires is collected on the track to get offline and get into that stuff, what they call the marbles. It is head bobbed down. I think he took a quick look at his gas gauges. Well, there is Nigel. Is he going, going back under? in front? Hmm. 
these two teammates, they will say all the proper things about how hard they're fighting amongst themselves for the good of the team and everything, but there is the rumor going around. There is the feeling that perhaps they are not great buddies. And the reason for that simply is finances. Nigel Mansell making a rumored nine or $10 million this year. Ricardo Patrese rumored to make something on the order of one to $2 million, and he is not happy about that financial discrepancy. Two laps remaining. Especially as he is out qualified and, uh, of course, beaten Nigel on two previous occasions this year. He just feels the discrepancy is just a little bit wider than it might be. I'm not even sure that he gets 1.1 or 2 million. I think he gets more like 800,000. Nigel, of course, needs that to go now. Bought himself an incredibly expensive house in Florida and will be spending more time here in the United States. And I think in the back of his little mind, he can see that big oval up the road clinching at him too. I think he might have a go at that before he gives up racing altogether. There is Stefano Modena. Tough break for him in Monte Carlo after running for about two-thirds of the race in second position and pressing Ayrton Senna at several points on the racetrack. Is he in the fact now pressing the car? I believe he is. This is the battle position. for position. Yeah, this is for third place. It is, too. Takes Obviously, it easily. Obviously, has got some sort of problem yeah. developed. The most unreliable part of the Williams at the moment, of course, the Williams Renault, is the semi-automatic gearbox. But there's no doubt about it. When they're right, they are absolutely tremendous. And I would think that within two or three years, pretty well every car out there will have some sort of a semi-automatic gearbox. You can let Ferrari and Williams get all the bugs out, do all the testing, and then everybody will have it. But it does make a big difference. Nigel Mansell beginning the last lap of the race. The transverse gearbox. These are transverse semi-automatic gearboxes distinguished from the longitudinal gearbox on the Ferrari. Each works. Nigel, don't wave to the crowd too soon there, buddy. <laughs> it's not over till it's over. Oh, my God. The longitudinal box carries much of its mass and weight unhappily behind the rear axles of the car. The transverse box, such as the one on the Williams, is in front of the rear wheels. A great help to the designer in weight and balance on these incredibly delicate race cars. But they do have their problems, as David pointed out. They shift fractionally faster than a manually shift. And you can also keep your hands on the steering wheel as you do your shifting. I think that uh, <coughs> Gerhard Berger still misses the Ferrari on going into the second season with the uh, Honda McLaren. I think he still misses that semi-automatic gearbox. He's just having to go back to take the wheel to shift. He's found to be quite a chore this year. And I know it must, it must be a big help. As we watch, Stefano Modena took his place behind Nelson Piquet. Oh, slender. Nigel Mansell's very slow. He's not only slow, he's stopped. He has stopped. Nigel Mansell is beating on the car. Could this be? Oh, my. He has 57 seconds. We will watch for the Benetton of Nelson Piquet. But at the rate Nigel Mansell is going, there is no question that he is going to be beaten on the 69th and final lap of this race after leading the first 68. That fuel sign obviously then was uh, meant in all seriousness. Here we see the car streaming down that back straight. Expect to see Nelson Piquet any minute. There, there's there he Piquet. Comes. I wonder if he knows. From second place, he has snatched victory. And time will tell the reason why. Well, you've got to be skillful in any form of racing endeavor to win, but you've also got to have a large slice of luck. How about the new second place car? And well, right about now, that. Nelson Piquet will see Nigel Mansell there, there by the side of the road. And by now, he certainly knows that he is leading this race. One more corner. Well, make it two. We'll give him a right and a left-hand turn. And Nelson Piquet will pick up the victory. I can't believe it. I don't think they can either, too. And I'm sure the Williams team absolutely can't believe it. Oh, they must be in shock. The checkered flag is out, and it waves for Nelson Piquet picking up his... There you see Mike Cranifus of Ford with the flat hat on there. He's the worldwide director of Ford Racing, a German that come to live in Detroit, and he'll be absolutely ecstatic over that. Victory number 23. There you see Ricardo Patrese now running in third position as he passes the stranded car of his teammate. God, I hope they didn't try to be clever and run him about four liters less fuel to save themselves uh, 4 7 to 28, 2.8 pounds. But it's the sort of thing these Formula One guys do do. Well, it appears that one Williams will make it to the finish line 
Yes, he is across safely. We'll see if he can make his last lap. Oh Ricardo betrayed him. Well, I mean, he did make a pit stop, so he might have been able to save just enough fuel to get around if he had the same amount. Oh, your heart has to go out to this guy, Nigel Mansell, who drove so well, but that 17th career win will not happen today. Nevertheless, the Williams cars have shown what they're capable of, and that should make things very interesting in Mexico City in two weeks. We'll be right back. Die dus op de vierde plaats uitkomt en Gachot zal uh, vijfde worden. Daar zijn ze, de beide Jordans. Allebei, vuistje in de hoogte, vier en vijf. De beide Jordans. Een troostend schouderklopje van een bankcommissaris voor Nigel Menzel. Maar of dat zal volstaan om zijn dag weer goed te maken, daar twijfel ik sterk aan. Kijk eens speurend naar de achterkant van uh, zijn wagen. Wat er precies los is, is ons nog niet duidelijk. Misschien vernemen we dat nog in de komende minuten. In elk geval, als het uh, benzinepech is, dan heeft hij het uh, voor een groot deel zelf gezocht natuurlijk. Door in die laatste ronde nog zo snel te blijven doorgaan. Ik zei het al, hij draaide een nieuw rondrecord. 1, 23 en nog wat duizendste van een seconde. Dat was niet meer nodig. Hij had uh, bijna een minuut voorsprong op Nelson Piquet. Had het dus uh, zeer rustig aan kunnen doen. Krijgt nu een uh, lift van Ricardo Patrese. Terwijl hier de overwinnaar van deze grote prijs van Canada uit zijn bed ontstapt. Dit zijn de grote verliezers. Het heeft er bijna 69 ronden lang naar uitgezien dat ze de grote winnaars zouden worden. De Williams. Maar het heeft niet mogen zijn. Ze waren in elk geval veruit de snelste wagens op de baan. Hier de Jodens informatie na de vijfde grote prijs van het seizoen krijgen ze wat ze al een tijdje verdienen. Manzel groet het publiek. Heeft in elk geval een uh, zeer goede wedstrijd gereden. Alleen kan je je afvragen of hij aan het eind niet te snel is gegaan. Of hij niet te veel benzine heeft verbruikt. Ervan uitgaande natuurlijk dat het benzinepech is. Die hem in het zicht van de aankomstlijn heeft doen stranden. Het kan ook best iets anders zijn. Een of ander mechanisch of elektronisch mankement. Maar dat kunnen we van hieruit naar de studio in Brussel natuurlijk onmogelijk uitmaken. Weer een uh, Braziliaanse vlak die wappert aan het eind van een grote prijs. Maar deze keer niet voor Ayrton Senna, maar voor Nelson Piquet. Daar zien we ze de groen-gele vlaggen met die blauwe wereldbol in. Een bekend gezicht de jongste jaren na afloop van een Formule 1 wedstrijd. Daar grijpt Ricardo Patrese uit zijn wagen. 